Hello and welcome to Information Technology Fundamentals. In this lesson we're going to look at the different hardware system components. We're going to review the way in which system components uh, determine performance and how to select or specify the appropriate components uh, for a computer system. We also need to be able to describe the functions of motherboards, processors, memories, and the expansion bus, as well as how cooling takes place inside of a computer. And lastly, we're going to finish up with looking at uh, the role of uh, firmware in a PC, commonly known as BIOS or UEFI. We're going to look at the core components of a uh, computer uh, from the pro uh, perspective that we are selecting or trying to determine what computer we need to meet our needs. So we want to make sure our key components have the performance necessary to uh, carry out whatever task we have in front of them. So we'll start by looking at the CPU. Uh, often called the central processing unit. It is the device that runs or makes the computer work. It has many um, components inside of it, but for this class, we're really going to look at a couple of things. One is uh, the clock rate, which will be given in gigahertz, which is a general perspective on how fast the computer or the central processing unit or how much work it will do. Uh, along with that, we have the system RAM or memory. It has a speed in which it transfers data, and it also has a size uh, given in typically in gigabits right now. When we decide we want to run a program, the program is uh, moved into RAM and the processing unit, the CPU, is able to go into the RAM and grab the uh, program, perform work on it, and then send the results back to the RAM and perhaps back to other components on the system. The other thing we need to be worried about is what they call the fixed disk or our non-volatile storage, which uh, typically today is going to be a solid state drive. Um, they are faster in transferring than a hard drive. However, a hard drive is still cheaper, and if you don't have um, a huge need for performance or speed, so for like archiving or backing up, a hard drive uh, likely is going to be a good choice for that. And lastly, we have our graphics processing unit, or GPU. Those of you in the uh, gaming world are probably very familiar with these. They use uh, a different type of processor to process just video for games and uh, other things on the screen. So they do a lot of rendering. They also uh, are faster at some other calculations like they're used for Bitcoin mining and some other things. So these are all components that we would look at when we're deciding to purchase a computer. Computers uh, are going to interface with other devices and the internet. They do that through a network interface card, commonly called a NIC. They could be either wired, uh, which typically would be use an RJ45 jack in an ethernet port, or wireless using Wi-Fi radio, or even Bluetooth would fall into this category, although it's not used very often this way. If we look in the inside of a computer, uh, the core component there is going to be the motherboard. Everything plugs into the motherboard. And you should be able to look at a motherboard and identify the different components, as we see in this particular uh, diagram. You should be able to pick out the seat where the CPU goes. It's typically a square socket. What the memory slots look like, as you can see, they're uh, usually very close to the CPU. Uh, the disk drive or SATA connectors on this example uh, where the adapter card slots are, and the input-output ports, uh, USB, video, audio, etc. So you should be able to take a, take a motherboard and identify those different uh, components on it. So let's talk about the processor in a little more detail. The CPU really is something called an integrated circuit, which means it has literally millions of transistors on it, all of which are connected through some type of a very small conductor. These small conductors are measured in microns, which is a very small uh, measurement. 
Although a computer may have other uh, microprocessors that do work, the CPU is the main processor doing the work. Generally, in computers today, there are two manufacturers, Intel and AMD. We could spend a lot of time comparing the two, but really uh, for this particular, uh, for IT fundamentals, you should become familiar with the names. So on the uh, Intel side, we have Core, Core, Core 2, sometimes it'll be called Pentium, Celeron, Atom, and Xenon. Xenon is the high end for servers uh, that you may not see in uh, personal computers, but you will find those in uh, servers. On the AMD side, they have the old names, Athlon, Phenom, Sempron, Tyrion, AMD FX, Opteron. And they use something called a Zen, their proprietary Zen micro uh, architecture. There is another type of CPU that is uh, called an ARM or Advanced Risk Machine Microarchitecture. This is what you're going to find in your smartphones and tablets. Currently, they're not used in uh, workstations or personal computers, but there is a growing trend uh, that this may happen. Some of the vendors for ARM CPUs would be Apple, Samsung, NVIDIA. They use something called a reduced instruction set for computing. This re reduced instruction set uh, simplifies instructions and allows them to be processed very quickly. Intel and AMD have many different types of features that they talk about, but common to both of them are control unit, pipeline, execution units, and uh, registers. The control unit is the part of the processor that fetches the next line of instruction in sequence from the RAM. The execution unit is what it sounds like, and that is uh, where the execution of the instruction takes place. And lastly, we have the register. The original instruction set for computers was known as x86. It's a 16-bit set of uh, instructions, and it, start, it came about in about 1978. Uh, the 16-bit really defines how wide or how big the uh, bus is that allows uh, data to flow. So the bigger the number, the more information can flow. So 16-bit is the old and 78. Then we had 32-bit, and now almost all processors are 64-bit, which is a very wide lane. And with uh, each uh, change in the size of the instruction set, it also allowed each of the processors to access more memory. So the 32-bit CPU is limited to about 4 gigabytes, and a 64-bit CPU can address up to 16 exabytes. So you can see that's a huge difference, and 64-bit uh, is the standard at the moment for uh, workstations uh, and servers. CPUs uh, use something called a clock speed and a bus speed to differentiate themselves between models. The clock speed indicates the number of instructions that can be processed in one second. So the faster the clock speed, the more work a CPU can do. Frequently it is given uh, for most processors today in gigahertz. Although the clock speed it will give you a rough estimate of how much work is going to be done, when you have CPUs that use different architecture, the clock speed may or may not be a good indicator. There are some CPUs that, that carry out more than one instruction per cycle, so they can do more work per cycle than uh, another CPU architecture. So the clock speed is not the only indicator of the amount of work that can be done. The front side bus speed is how fast information is transferred between the CPU and system memory. Uh, it's an important factor for performance, but they also have to match. Your RAM front side bus speed and your CPU front side bus speed must uh, match up in order for them to work together.
When we talk about CPUs, you'll often hear the term that they have more than one core, which is a way to improve in performance, which means we have one physical or one physical die, it's called sometimes, which will have multiple execution units in it. Uh, sometimes there'll be two, four, eight. I think we have 24 and 36 at the moment as well. And then there's other computers that allow you to have more than one processor on it. So it has multiple, uh, allows you to put multiple physical chips on it. Uh, in both cases, those are used to improve perf performance of a computer. A bus is a circuit on your motherboard that can, that carries information uh, between components. It can carry data, it can carry addressing information. It can carry timing uh, because all computers run on a very tight uh, clock timing. And these uh, buses can also uh, carry power. The system or front side bus is the uh, data exchange between the CPU and system memory. And your expansion bus is uh, between all the other IOs and the CPU and perhaps other processors. Um, Many motherboards today have onboard video and onboard sound, which also needs to move data on the motherboard through buses. Here is a table that outlines uh, expansion bus types. Uh, currently, PCI Express 3 is probably the uh, current standard. And if you look at one of these uh, cards that go in there, you'll see there are lanes, or channels sometimes they're called on the card. And each one of those lanes will give you one gigabyte per second of data transfer. High-end graphic cards will use uh, 16 of these. And if a very high-end computer will have multiple graphic cards, <clears throat> in which case, in effect, you're using uh, perhaps up to 32 lanes of PCI Express 3 on a single computer, giving you very high-end uh, video performance. Computers uh, create a lot of heat. There's two different ways we can look at uh, cooling. One is through passive, which would be heat sinks and alike. Uh, there is no physical component uh, moving the uh, air around. And the other is through active cooling, which has to do with using fans. Uh, typically, you're going to find fans inside the case, fans on the GPU, and fans on the CPU. So the fans uh, will cool the different parts and components of a computer. Another option is for liquid-based cooling. And this works similar to a car. As you can see in this uh, diagram, the CPU has uh, two cooling lines attached to it. They are connected to a pump, and the pump moves the uh, liquid coolant uh, to a radiator where there's fans to cool it off. The last thing we're going to talk about in today's lesson is about BIOS and UEFI. And it falls under this category because your BIOS is... A uh, on the motherboard. It is stored in something called the CMOS chip. So it is part of the motherboard and the BIOS or the UEFI information uh, that's kept in the chip requires a battery. So you'll find a small watch battery in most motherboards that uh, is there to uh, provide power to keep the BIOS or UEFI information. Those batteries last uh, three years or so. But the uh, BIOS is the first thing that happens when you turn on the computer. First, there's a power on self-test. Once we know the, uh, the power supply is working, then the CPU and the motherboard goes to the BIOS and starts loading the basic input-output systems. It brings up the uh, the uh, keyboard and the mouse, uh, and then it'll eventually give you video and audio uh, and all those basic functions. There's a lot of uh, parts to the UEFI that we can customize nowadays. If we look on this uh, screen, we can see a on the right side, there are many settings for memory, for the processor, for SATA, which would be the hard drive, uh, how the computer is going to boot, boot sequence. If a computer has 
onboard thing, onboard components like motherboard and audio. There's going to be controls for those inside the UEFI as well. Uh, typically, if you want to access the BIOS or UEFI, when you turn on the computer, you're going to press a particular key. F2 is common, as well as the delete key, and that will get you into the BIOS where you can then make adjustments to it. This is also the place where the system time is stored, so when the computer is off, it's actually still, the clock is still running, so it knows what time it is when it turns back on. And here is an example of what the UEFI looks like. Uh, very similar, one of the big differences between BIOS and UEFI you'll find right away is that your mouse works with UEFI, uh, whereas in a typical BIOS you have to use just the keyboard. So we looked at system components uh, and work with one another. Some of the uh, definitions and performance measures of them. You should be able to look at a motherboard and identify the different components, as well as uh, looking inside a case, you should be able to identify the type of cooling system and the pieces that are being uh, cooled. And also, lastly, we want to be able to turn on a computer and access the BIOS and UEFI and understand what features are set up and how to customize it.